that they could get after him, but they're the only ones, so Ryan Prager has been a surefire Friday night arm for these Aggies. For the Auburn Tigers, it'll be Cooper Weiss leading it off. He can fly if he gets on base. Irish follows Weiss in the lineup. And Ryan Prager quickly has him down to the count. 0-2. Oh Just a bit above the zone with a fastball. Talked about that bounce back start as Prager faces Cooper Weiss. Prager last weekend against Mississippi State, six and a third, two runs. Neither were earned, and he struck out eight. And that came off his outing March 15th at Florida. It was the only time he struggled this year. Now we've gone full against Florida. Prager, two and a third, six runs all earned. But then came back strong to get the win against Mississippi State. Prager's 5-0 and oh this year. On the mound. Well, he was 0-2 oh to Weiss, but then missed with four straight pitches out of the zone. It's a leadoff walk, and Weiss can flat out run when he gets on 21 stolen bases this year in 23 attempts. Maybe the best base stealer in the country. Yeah, tricky to do that off of a lefty sometimes. You always got to go first move. So we'll see how he wants to go after Prager. But uh, Auburn, a team that will play small ball, that will bunt and run, that will create movement on the base paths. But let's go back to that last at bat. Hat tip right there to Cooper Weiss. Gets down 0-2 against a pitcher who's only got four walks all season. And he draws a four-pitch walk to start this game. Irish lifted to left. Caden Sorrell, the freshman, coming in, making his third straight start. And he'll make the catch. Yeah, like you said, that walk earlier by Prager, just his fifth walk, and he struck out 49 this year. How about that ratio? Yeah, uh, that'll get you a Friday night roll. So he walks twice. He gets Irish to fly out. Bobby Pierce, the right fielder at the plate. Certainly when Weiss is on, the Aggies will be very aware of him. But like you said, always a bit tougher task when you face the left-hander. Auburn on the road. Going to want to strike early here if they can. Strike first. I'd expect something. It's just a when you're going on first move with a lefty, it's it's a calculated risk. You got to go when that leg lifts, and you you know you run the risk of getting picked off if they come over. But get that leadoff walk against Ryan Prager. You want to try to get him over, get him in early. You know, one in five in conference on the road, top ten team in the Aggies. Chance to get the Aggies on their heels if you can get get Weiss in scoring position. But man, Prager has been a tough cookie to crack so far all year. And a walk like that is, has shown that it's not phasing him. And there he goes. The throw from Jackson Appel. And it's just the, oh, I was going to say the third time this year that Weiss has been thrown out. The throw and the tag were well ahead of Weiss, but we have a safe call at second base. Looked like he was thrown out, caught stealing for just the third time this season, but did the tag get there? It's well in time. And this play will go under review. Can you overturn it? Out. So Weiss is out, and it is indeed just the third time this year he's caught stealing in 24 attempts. Jackson Appel threw him out. And Jackson Appel is a pin transfer. He was terrific at throwing out runners last season, and he just got one of the best base dealers in college baseball here in the first inning. 
Pierce. That stayed on the line, but then just went foul as it rolled past the bag, or bounced past the bag, I should say. Well, early action here in this Friday evening, but we were highlighting Weiss and his ability to run, and it took a perfect pitch and catch to get him out and barely got him. But Auburn is showing movement here early on, trying to strike first like we talked about, but Ryan Prager unfazed so far after that leadoff walk he issued. Pierce to shallow left center coming in. Jace Lavulette going out. Ollie Calario, and it's the Aggie shorts, leads it off against Connor McBride. And low on a fastball to start the count. Grohovac on Tuesday when the Aggies beat Houston Christian 6-3. He lost a hit streak at nine games in a row, but he has reached base in 14 straight contests. And it's one and one. Trying to frame it behind the plate is Ike Irish, but that was a way. So a two ball, one strike count. Grohovac's 31 RBIs is second on this AM team, only to Braden Montgomery, who hits behind him. But Montgomery is after Lavulette. Lavulette is next, then it's Montgomery. Montgomery, the 40 RBIs, and Grohovac, the 31. Yeah, I'd say there's probably not a hitter in America with more upside in the leadoff position than Gavin Grohovac. And you often think about a speedy guy who's going to maybe bunt a little bit, put the ball on the ground and run. But Coach Schlossnagel going with Grohovac, and he has for the whole year. He's a little more strikeout prone than your typical leadoff hitter. But as a freshman to be freshman to be doing what he's doing, clearly, clearly unfazed. Beautiful. Went the opposite way on the ground for a leadoff single. So now he has reached base in 15 consecutive games. There's go. the top three in the order. Grohovac, the eight homers. Grohovac also ties for the team lead with six doubles. Laviolette coming to the plate, then followed by Montgomery. Laviolette, 33 career home runs at A&M. Yeah, I mentioned Grohovac's upside. He's just a freshman, but the guy's got power to all fields, stupid power to all fields, and he hits for average, clutch hitting, kind of can do it all. But talk about upside of Grohovac. Upside and the, just the wow factor of the top three in this Aggie lineup are make them must-watch TV when they come to the plate. So much damage can be done when they swing. Wow. Lavulette turned on that. Belted it deep, but that's also way foul. It just seems like everything he swings at has exit velocity coming off the bat. Well, it, it's like Jack Caglione of Florida. It's like he can miss hit balls every which way, and they got a chance to get out of here. And then obviously when he connects, you know, it, it's, it's going through the roof. But uh, he has so much power that he doesn't need to hit a ball you know, like your average college guy to get out of the yard. I mean, I'm, I'm eight inches shorter than him and probably 30 pounds lighter. And if I got a home run, it was pretty much the perfect swing. Jace can hit a ball 70% and give himself a chance. And that's, you know, one part that makes him so special. May have been fooled there on that swing on an inside pitch off speed. And it's two and two. Looked a little out in front and off balance. Yep, definitely fooled. That was a sloppy swing, but that was one. That was a swing where you're hunting a certain pitch. You don't get it. You just kind of get to the next one. That's not a two-strike type swing. Threw it away. 
with a fastball, and he struck him out. So one down after the Grow Hovac single. Big bounce back for McBride there. Just painting a heater outside, maybe a ball, half a ball out. You know, as a hitter, you're taught to protect that corner, not give it up, because you can get rung up by an umpire if you take something a little off the corner with two strikes. So sometimes you'll see these hitters wave at that ball just to maybe even slap it foul. And that's what you saw Jace do there, but not only was he running out of bat, but he was late. Had to finish my thought, because Braden Montgomery's coming to the plate, and we got to talk about him, because he's also must-watch must watch TV, leading the conference in RBI, and got to be on a Golden Spikes watch list at this point. Now he's gone deep to right field. That one is sailing out of here. Braden Montgomery, 13th home run of the year. And it's 2-0 A&M. Two more RBIs for the SEC leader. Montgomery knew it the second it left his bat. Just an absolute bullet over 375 in right center. Look at him time this thing up. Look at those eyes connected all the way through it. Kind of Ken Griffey-esque finish there. Look at that. That is sweet. And we talked about Golden Spikes right then and there. And that's what's going to get him on that watch list and probably a finalist. You see him do it from both sides of the plate every weekend. And one of the more polished hitters in college baseball. After Montgomery homers, it's now probably the hottest hitting Aggie of them all in Jackson Appel. Highest average on the team at 373, and SEC play has certainly not cooled him off. Inside and a 2 0 count. So 373, the average for the year. Appel is 8 for 19 in SEC play. That's a 421 average. That's what you love to see right there, is what you just said, Will. That, that average going up as the pitching and the competition gets better. Obviously, you, you want to be your best every night, but when you're seeing arms at 90 to 98 regularly, and you can lean on a guy like Appel, that's huge as a coach. And Montgomery cleared the bases, and Appel's trying to start up something new. Yeah, he is. And, I, you know, if you watched Appel, as we see Montgomery there chatting it up after his, his dinger, the first series or two of the year, Appel was gets one to one in left center. Calling for it is Chris Stainfield, and he'll make the catch. There's two down. I'll finish my thought. Is he, he, he was very underwhelming just from the naked eye as you watch his approach. And we knew the coaches loved him out of pen, but there wasn't a whole lot that I saw initially that, that really drew me to be excited about Jackson Appel. And, oh, boy, was I proven wrong because he's just a pure hitter once again, just like Montgomery, switch hitter. So doing it from both sides of the plate, which could be such an advantage. Now you get to the part of the order with Ted Burton, the Michigan transfer, followed by Hayden Schott, the Columbia transfer. Both very good hitters, but both Burton and Schott off to somewhat slow starts in SEC play. These are two important guys in the lineup that the Aggies will definitely need to come on. Now they're both capable. They're both excellent hitters. Just the first two weekends in SEC play haven't necessarily gone their way. Well, it's all about barrels, and you find barrels, you hit balls hard. You know, it, it'll all take care of itself, plus or minus a few good or bad breaks. But you're right, they are good hitters. They've proven it over an entire college career already. So you always have those one or two guys that, that, that just kind of start slow, trying to get their feet under them, or maybe don't adjust to that high-level SEC pitching right away that they're going to see. In play or out of play? Let North Wind is coming. 
That got into the Auburn dugout. It was out of reach for Cooper McMurray, the first baseman. He didn't quite get to the railing, even had he reached over. I don't think it was close enough for him to grab. I may beg to differ there, but you it was think close. he could have gotten there. It huh? was. It, it, he, it, it may have resulted in him falling in that dugout, but it looked like it almost donked one of his teammates on the head. So I think it was probably maybe two or three feet in. Well, you're okay falling into your own dugout. Yeah, they're yeah. going to cushion you. They're going to brace you for sure. It's the opposing dugout. You're not going to have much padding. They may all scatter and get out of the way. Burton hanging in there. Stick with the two strikes. McBride here is his fastball is flat. Um, it's it's nothing, you know, to write home about. But he is he's he's really okay throwing any pitch in any count. But he's just he's spotting up that heater in in and out. That that's where he's going to make his money. And obviously, a pitch like that will will do it every time. A painted outside slider. But he's just going to try and just live on those corners and and miss barrels. Now he didn't miss Montgomery's, but you know, for someone who's got a track record like he does. Proving himself through the midweeks. You know, he's going to come in. He's got to locate just like that. That's a good spot. Up and out. Un. That was against Florida when he finally gave up a run. And we told you he was touched up in that outing but came back strong to defeat Mississippi State last weekend. Cooper McMurray will lead off the top of two for Auburn. Like Braden Montgomery, he is in the top five of the SEC in runs driven in. McMurray had a grand slam in the Auburn win on Tuesday over Jacksonville State. Auburn won that one 13 to three before they came here to College Station. Fouled away, so a two-ball, two-strike count. Ran out of bat there to that deceptive slider. Prager getting ahead on the corners early on. That's going to be key, we mentioned in the opening. When he works ahead, man, he's just so hard to hit. And if he doesn't, you know, he can get touched up like Florida got to him. But when he starts getting ahead and counts, he's just, you know, pick your poison. He can locate any pitch at any time. And it's hard to pick up, and especially right now, you got shadows. When these the time change happens, and these games, you know, start well a little earlier, I guess, with more sunlight, you get these shadows, and there's a little shadow coming through the top of Bluebell Park right there in front of home plate. So the hitters are having to watch this ball go through multiple shadows on its way in. That they went be, around. Yeah, and that can be hard to pick up, and that may have been the case right there for McMurray. It's Prager. Gets a leadoff punch out there. But, man, you're going to see just pure pitchability from, from Prager and McBride here. You get a look there. God, it's like a – almost spins like a split finger. It's just a changeup, but that slow rotation is what causes that ball to die in the dirt. First strikeout for Prager. Now he faces the center fielder, Chris Stanfield. Well, Prager is someone who usually works ahead and counts. Part of the reason for success. Liner, that's right at Ryan Targach. And there's two down. Stanfield hit it hard, but right at Ryan Targach. And watch Stanfield just stay on this slider coming right into him. I mean, that's being connected. That was like that Grohovac leadoff hit going the other way. Find a barrel, usually good things happen. Not in that case, so Stanfield's thinking right now, I'm due for a Texas leaguer. I need a jam shot hit because that was a perfect swing to split a gap for a double and just get stabbed by Targosh. Well, there's a bunt laid down by Mason Mainers that rolls foul, and one of the 
differences between these teams is that Auburn will use the bunt, whether that's try to bunt for a base hit or they will use the sacrifice. In most cases, A&M will not. No, it won't. is very much a part of the Auburn game. It is not the M.O. of the Aggies. It's not. And I don't know if it's the analytics or what drives that move from either team, but it is nice to see to see that small ball still used, kind of refreshing when you see bunt and runs, hit and runs, sack bunts, bunt for hits, all that um, put into your offensive arsenal. But Coach Schlossnagel and Nolan Kane have determined that you know, that, that's probably not the most efficient way for their offense to run. So you get to see two different sides here this series all weekend. Oh, Got him looking. Strikes out Mainers. That's two Ks. CWS was – Auburn was also there. Both A&M and Auburn in the College World Series a couple of years ago. The Aggies made the semifinals in Omaha in 2022. Last year, A&M was eliminated in the NCAA tournament in the regional final round at Stanford. Hayden shot as the DH. Most of the season, he has started in left field. Caden Sorrell has started to get the nod in left field as of late. Shot, very valuable hitter, remains in the lineup as the DH. And Hayden shot 277 the average, but I think there's also been a little bit of hard luck in there. He has barreled up some baseballs that have not fallen for hits, yet still a respectable average at 277. Shot did go two for five in the Aggies' win over Houston Christian on Tuesday, and he did drive in three runs. Breaking ball inside, under the bat. That is the third strikeout for Connor McBride. Yeah, nasty, went with a slider away earlier in the at bat, and then goes back foot here, looking to get under the bat of shot. We've said the pitch ability is gonna be there by McBride, and that's a great example there, just using the entire plate right there for shot. That's all it takes, kids, is you know, two pitches that can be located at any time. I chopped over the head of McBride and on the run, Javon Hernandez will make the play. Quick out of Ryan Targotch, two down. Yeah, I want to go back. I said that's all it takes, two, two pitches you can locate at any time. That's hard to do, obviously, but uh, it's not all about the sharpness of the breaker or, or, or the, the velocity of the heater, and you're going to see uh, McBride and Prager show you that all afternoon, all evening, of what just location can do in keeping excellent hitters off balance. 94 is a pretty good velocity, though. Most of the year, McBride's been in that 90 to 92 range, so maybe a little juiced up tonight. Ali Camarillo, you would call him hot as of late. Last 10 games, he's hitting 405. He has hit safely in nine of the last 10 games. He's kind of, he started off hitting 500, I think, over the first weekend or two. Kind of cooled off, but. Yeah, the first half of March wasn't kind to him. The back half of this month has been, though. Hammered that into left field. It's a two-out single. Camarillo stays hot. Good barrel right there. Watch this fastball here try and come inside, and he pulls these hands in. 
just enough. That's an easy ball to hook at the dugout. You got to pull your hands in just enough to keep it fair. And he gets it through the six hole there, hits it hard. That was a well-located pitch by McBride. He tried to come inside, and they're either looking for, for the hitter to take that and not be able to get to it, or if he does, you know, kind of foul it off his foot or something. Camarillo drops that barrel, gets himself a knock. So with Camarillo running, Caden Sorrell at the plate, third straight start in left field for the freshman. He's made the most of those previous two starts. He's gone three for eight combined in the series finale against Mississippi State and the game on Tuesday against HCU. Well, there's a train engineer back there that just gets it. That was clean. He belted out the Aggie wore him with his horn as he rolled by behind right field, much to the approval of this Bluebell Park crowd. Yeah, got, got two, got another one in there after the crowd gave him a whoop, a loud one, but sometimes you'll hear them try it. You can barely pick up what they're trying to do. That one was perfect. Sorrell. And with two outs, Camarillo running. He's going to third. May hold him up at third base. They will. A double ripped by Sorrell. Two on in scoring position with two out. Gets the barrel extended. Look at the changeup. Great view of that right there. Sorrell just keeps the bat moving. Maybe caught it a little off the end, but he gets it, keeps it fair, gets it down the line, and standing up to third is Camarillo, and standing up to second is is the freshman Sorrell turning it over to Grahovac. And the Aggies trying to do it here with two outs. All with two outs. Start Grahovac off with a strike. So A&M the first time through the lineup against McBride, four hits. Grahovac was one of them, an opposite field single back in the first inning. Then he was aboard when Braden Montgomery launched his home run. He skied this to straightaway center field, actually shallow center field. And Chris Stanfield will make the catch. Who in the country that can put together a pitching staff like Butch Thompson? That's what brought him up through the ranks. He was a pitching coach. So off the bat of Carter Wright, fouled away. Wright, the DH, hitting seventh for the Tigers. So Prager through the first two innings, he's faced six, the minimum. He did issue a leadoff walk to Cooper Weiss to begin this game, but Weiss was caught stealing a rarity. He is hard to wipe out of the base paths once he goes with a theft attempt, but Jackson Appel, the Aggie catcher, threw him out. And ever since then, uh, he has retired everybody. Yeah, we, we've talked about it before, but pra Prager's deceptive. He's got one of the highest release points in college baseball, and he's got a high spin rate. So it's going to be coming from real north out of his arm, and it's going to stay there with that high spin rate so you don't – it's not coming at that down angle that you think it is. So very easy to miss under baseballs if you're a hitter against Ryan Prager. Ali Camarillo, he has been smooth with the glove this season. Not bad there either. So Prager thus far cruising early in this game. You look at where he ranks and some of the major pitching categories in the Southeastern Conference, the wins. He's 5-0. and oh. The strikeout to walk ratio with the two Ks against one walk today. Prager has struck out 51 this year against five walks. 
as you said when we first mentioned that that's what can get you a Friday night roll those numbers right there. Well that's what Max Wiener came here to do right. Yeah, and the Aggies pitching coach came here from the Seattle Mariners. He has that mantra Max Wiener does of dominate the zone. They ask for strike throwers. Ryan Prager has given it to him and then some. That's a nice pitch. That's in under the bat inside to Caden Green. There really isn't much he could have done with that had he even made contact. No. Nope. No, nope, it's just getting a hitter on your heels with that first pitch strike is just so important. That's what Max Wiener teaches. That's what he wants. Every coach says they want it. Every coach says to do it. That, that's like the first rule in pitching is pound the strike zone. But there's there's something a little more that he's emphasizing for this staff. Trying to get through past the diving Ali Camarillo into left field. First hit of the game for Auburn. And it comes off the bat of Caden Green. Yeah, Green goes down and gets one here. Just smokes a ground ball out of the reach of Camarillo. Good, you know, good piece of hitting. Found a barrel, got through, but Prager still did his job as well. So that's one of those where not super rattled as a pitcher. Did your job. You got the bottom of the order here and Hernandez to the plate. So trying to go get him before you turn it over to Weiss. And that could set the Tigers up for an inning here if you can see, see Hernandez find a way aboard. Auburn is also the team that likes to run. It's interesting with their offense. They have some power. And they do like to run, and Auburn is only, they're one of only two teams nationally that has hit more than 40 home runs and stolen more than 50 bases. It's just Auburn and USC upstate in that category. So they have some power. They do like to run, and they're often running here. It's a hit and run, and it's a foul ball. Caden Green will have to come on back to first base. So you get the sense that Auburn will be more of the manufacturer of runs this weekend. Yeah, I think ideally you got a combination of both. You, ha you have the, the tools to swing it and go produce runs, but you have the, the bat control and the athleticism to manufacture when necessary. And A&M does not run that much on the base paths, but they, they have weapons throughout the lineup when, it, when there's a bat in their hand. So they're going to do it by swinging, and, and there's no, no denying that by, by Jim Schlossnagel. And I think Auburn's in the exact same boat as far as they, they wouldn't deny that, that their mantra is we're going to manufacture runs a, a bunch of different ways. That's not an easy play for Grahovac. Going to have to make a long throw, and he does. He gets Javon Hernandez. Green goes to second base there on the high chopper. There was absolutely no shot at him. Man, that's a good decision by the freshman right there. Look at him. Look at second. He considers it for a split second, but then has to make a throw across the diamond. Only gets Hernandez by a step. But, man, you open a real can of worms if you're the Aggies and Grohovac if you go to second with that ball and don't get green. So... Even though you leave a runner in scoring position, that, that's big to go get that second out as a surefire instead of taking that, that chance at getting the lead runner. Cooper Weiss, when he walked in the first inning, he was down 0-2. But then the next four pitches were out of the zone. Weiss, after he was caught stealing in the first inning, now 21 of 24 on his theft attempts this season. Hits here with two outs and a runner in scoring position. He's got Caden Green out at second base. Lifted this down the line and right. Should be an easy play for Braden Montgomery, and it will end the inning. And the Tigers will. I wonder if, that's, if he knows that. 
I bet he does. There's a lot of baseball left, though. There is. I, I think he's aware of that, though. Yeah, they, they, they may even be joking about it. I, I, you got to be careful, though, in these dugouts. You talk about numbers and stats and whatever, and sometimes some guys can handle it, some, some guys can't. But Jay Slavulet, 33 career homers as an Aggie. He's already in the top 10 on this school's home run list as far as a career. Dalen Holt has the school record with 56. Holt playing in the late 90s and on into 2000. He's gone opposite field. He hit that well. That's going back toward the wall, and it's off the wall. La Violette leading off with a double. Man, that ball was tagged the other way. Watch him stay on this ball. That's a great pitch, too. I mean, a painted outside fastball and the length of Jace. He actually struck out on that pitch last at bat, but he was not late on that one. Peppers it off the wall next to the 44 Farms sign. And, man, Connor McBride just executes right there. Really does make a nice pitch, but sometimes you can do that, and one of the better hitters in the country can can really tell you he doesn't care how good of a pitch it is. He's just going to drive it, and that's what he did there. A&M has five hits. Three of them are for extra bases. The Montgomery homer, Lavulette just doubled, and an inning ago, Caden Sorrell doubled. Short hop for Cooper McMurray, and he'll get first base himself. Lavulette moves to third. So one out. Yeah. Jackson Appel coming to the plate. The pin transfer. First team all Ivy League last year. And in the NCAA regional with the Penn Quakers a season ago, he blasted a crucial eighth inning home run that helped Penn to an upset win over the host Auburn. He had three hits in that game. Infield drawn in against Jackson Appel. Now, Jackson Appel, he went to Penn, but he's from Houston. Saw there that both parents are Aggies. He went to Memorial High School, same high school as Boomer White. Looks like he's done enough here. Lifted that into left. It's deep enough to bring Jace Laviolette home. More production from Appel. Laviolette started this inning off with a double. He comes home later on the sack fly. That's just hitting 101 right there as you see the bubbles rocking and rolling here at Bluebell. But take the first pitch you see that's kind of up in the strike zone and, and lift it up into that north wind. Get yourself an RBI and, and add a third run to the scoreboard for the Aggies. Don't try and do too much. Very nice piece of hitting by Appel. So A&M, two in the first, one here in the third. Ted Burton bats. Struck out looking his first time. That's the pitch. That's where McBride wants to live. May have been half a ball off or so, but he hit his spot. You're going to get that call almost every time. And if you can throw a lot of fastballs there, you're going to miss a lot of barrels. It's come back to go 2 2 now after that swing and a miss. Was 2 0.
chopped high over the head of Nolan Kane, the Aggie third base coach. Burton trying to start something up new. After Jackson Appel just drove home Jace Lavulette with a sack fly. Man, that's Hit this rather deep. Yeah, that's on to the warning track before Chris Stanfield makes the catch. 2025, Lavulette and Ike Irish, they'll be in the same class potentially. You'll see them both. Early picks, first round projected picks. Irish and Lobulette. Like we said, then no such thing as a sophomore slump with these two. Irish and Lobulette, they have picked up where they left off in their first seasons of college baseball. Yeah, both big lefties. Hit for power, hit for average. Hard oh, cut. Man. Boy, he went right through that. That was right down the heart of the plate. Yeah, right in the middle of the zone, and he was trying to take it out of Bluebell Park. Eight home runs this year for Irish. Prager tried to bury one to get him. Mm. Not an easy play again for Grohovac. This throw in the dirt, not in time. Scooped up by Ted Burton, but Irish beat the throw. Looks like an infield single, and that'll extend his hit streak to 12 games in a row. You see Grohovac not able to really come through that ball. Clearly Irish safe there. It's almost like... Grohovic at third got caught a little bit flat-footed when he had to get rid of that ball. Wasn't able to get any momentum in his legs to grab that and fire it with some velocity behind it as he looked like he you know, had to play the long hop there. You get those, those high hoppers, sometimes it's a, okay, get it out of your glove real fast. Get it out. You know, they're running down the line and that can be, I got to get it out quick with not a lot of velocity, or maybe I take more time to make sure that that throws really strong. Different ways to go about it there, but look like if that ball had a little more on it, maybe he had a chance to get him, but leadoff, leadoff runner on, and Auburn here cooking as Bobby Pierce comes to the plate, middle of the lineup, trying to answer the Aggies, cut into that 3-0 lead. Now Prager worked behind in the count against Pierce. Comes back with a strike. He got Pierce to pop up into shallow left field the first time. Pierce may have had something in his eye. He has granted time at home plate. In the age of the pitch clock, you're not always given timeout. But I think he had to make an adjustment. And he'll step back in. Well, we were telling you about Ike Irish, Jace Lavulette, potential first round draft picks. Also want to wish you a happy MLB opening day. There's a lot going on in the world of sports today. Got some basketball on. March Madness. Yep. Sweet 16 round begins tonight. And there's a fly toward La Violette, the talented center fielder, and one out. In Texas, you got the Houston Open in golf that got going today. So uh, that and Easter weekend, yeah, got a lot on the uh, on the agenda the next few days here. 
Well, you're talking about March Madness and the Sweet 16 round begins tonight. How about that game on Sunday, second round in Memphis between Texas A&M and Houston? What a terrific matchup. That, to me, that game is what March Madness is about. Everybody making plays, fighting it out. The game went overtime. It's terrific stuff. Yeah, that was that was fun to watch. You know, it doesn't matter who you're, what side you're on. As it, you know, A&M's done that a couple times in March Madness, coming back, you know, in the final minute of a game, and they did it there, buzzer beater to get to overtime. That was fun. That goes foul just off first base. Cooper McMurray struck out swinging against Prager back in the second. Prager struck out two in the second. Those are his only two Ks of the game. Thus far, he's allowed just two singles, one of them on the infield. That's Ike Irish this inning. Irish running at first base. Didn't go around on a check swing. Really not much of a check swing. He started to offer, but held up well in time. McMurray, yeah, got caught leaking for strike three, his first at bat on the slider. Not sure he's able to pick it up too well, but we're going to see if Prager sticks with it because he's done it right there again. When a left-on-left -left matchups on the table and maybe that hitter can get a little pull happy, maybe that front side goes a little quick. The slider can, can kind of be your saving grace as a pitcher. Slider away. Full count now. Ooh, good swing there, just high. Just got under it. Two down as that falls into the glove of Laviolette. And I mean, he had to wait. Well, from our, where we sit, when that ball takes off the bat, takes off out of the bat, and you see it go straight up, we just, boom, we see it go right by our eyes. And that one had a little something extra on it off the bat there. A McMurray, I just, I wasn't sure that launch angle was enough to get out, but you could tell he barreled it up. Chris Stanfield, that is a fair ball down the line. That will send Irish to third base. Stanfield has a double. Auburn situation here, two in scoring position with two out. A&M may have been saved here. Look at this ball. It's in, down, and tagged by Stanfield, but it gets off that left field foul wall instead of going down in that corner. Watch right here. If that gets in that corner. Irish may come home. Oh, yeah. I think Irish is maybe standing up at home because that can get tough to field in that corner. Stanfield. But Prager just needs an out to keep the Tigers scoreless, and Mainers is first pitch swinging. Is that in play for Sorrell? He reached over the wall and hit it hard. The wall that separates the playing surface from the Aggie bullpen, it was out of his reach. On Saturday against Mississippi State, Sorrell made exactly this kind of catch, reaching over that same wall in foul territory. He lost his glasses into the Aggie bullpen. This time it was out of reach. So the freshman going all out for it. Instead, it's just a rather long strike. Mainers goes back to Sorrell, opposite field and deep. Sorrell at the wall and he's run out of room. And Mainers goes yard, sixth home run of the year. And with one swing of the bat, he ties the game. Look at the excitement there from Mainers. He knows that's a, maybe the biggest swing he's had this year, just driving it the other way, not hitting it, driving it. Puts his head down and takes off, but there's a little north wind, and he put a good swing on it. It's getting out. Man, how about that with two outs, the double there by Stanfield, and then Mainers, look at the reaction here. <laughs> he almost ran over that umpire. I don't know why he decided to get in Mainers' way. 
But jumping for joy as he ties the game here in the top of four. Ryan Prager, little vulnerability right here. And he's been dominant up until this point, though. Brand new ball game. And again, with two outs, Prager and out away from Stranding, a couple in keeping this one three to nothing. Mainers with one swing ties it. Diving play, Gavin Grahovac, and the throw will get Carter Wright. But Mason Mainers, biggest swing. Padres took on the Dodgers. Hayden shot will lead things off for the Aggies in the fourth. So down here in Texas, they'll usually root for the Astros and Rangers. Astros dropped their opening day game to the Yankees, 5-4, to four, much to the dismay of Boomer White. Rangers are underway. They're playing the Cubs. They trail one to nothing early. You know, most Auburn fans over there toward the Georgia border, most of them are Braves fans. They'll have to wait a day to watch their team get started. The Braves were postponed today in Philadelphia, and they'll take uh, the Phillies on tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Eastern. That'll be the start of the season for the Braves. The Braves with A.J. Minter, a former teammate of Boomer White. Mm-hmm. Saw him, AJ Minter. Uh, where did we see him? We saw him together at a football game. Ole Texas A&M at Ole Miss this year. Yep, he was in Minter attendance. AJ Minter was on the sidelines. And Boomer White had pretty good accommodations in that game as well. And not, not good enough to get to the sideline, but <laughs> they weren't bad. Your travel was nice. <laughs> it was <laughs> fouled away. It was. Yeah. Um, me and Minter. AJ Minter got close because we both had surgery in 2015 uh, at the start of the season. So we rehabbed together. He had Tommy John. I had thoracic outlet. Hayden Shot has driven this deep to right, and they're going back towards section 12. Shot leaves the yard. That got over. Then it bounced back into the field to play, but it's a home run for Hayden Shot, and he puts the Aggies back up a run. Man, shot may get this over by a couple feet. You see him adjust to the breaking ball. Keeps the bat moving. Hits it hard, but hits it high. Was it enough to get out? It was close. You can see right here. And man, if fan had a chance to make a one-handed, left-handed oh, play. Oh, oh, is there some fan help there? It, yeah, that would have been close. Pierce made an effort. I think it was going up. And now it's Ryan Targotch. So A&M has homers tonight from Braden Montgomery and Hayden Schott. They both went into section 12 over the right field wall. I like that from Targotch. He's hitting under 200. And Trying to control the bat here, and find a way on with no outs, and third baseman Caden Green giving him some room. Going to show bunt, keep him honest. Didn't go around on the check swing, so a two and. So Targach. They appealed down to third base where Hank Heminen said he did not go around. Expect a big swing if there's a strike thrown here. That stayed upstairs and he walked him.
time. He's now hit safely in 10 of the last 11 games. Starts him off with a strike. It's a good pitch. It's a changeup, it looks like. I don't think that's a two seamer sinker. I think it's a changeup and 88. Fastball's been 92 to 94, so not a big difference there, but hard to pick up as a hitter. There it is again. Yeah, 87. Man, that's a nice pitch. You can throw that right on right. You can really start to kind of open up opportunity for any pitch to be thrown because that's a hard, risky pitch to execute as a changeup when you're throwing it to a, a right-hander to a right-hander or a left-hander to a left-hander. Uh, it, it's just easier to hit. A mistake is easy to hit there. Way up. Well, sometimes 0-2, they call it a waste pitch. You don't give a guy anything to hit. Usually those are thrown outside. Not that high up and almost to the backstop. Good block on a pitch in the dirt by Ike Irish. Yep. Works up, then he goes back down. Camarillo climbing back into the count here. Trying to turn this lineup over to the top here with some runners on. Exactly what McBride doesn't want. He's trying to come all the way back. For a while, Auburn, it didn't look like they had anybody working in the bullpen. Now they do. Runner goes. Pitches outside. Walk to Ali Camarillo. It's back-to-back -back walks after the Hayden shot home run. That's a big-time walk. That's a big time walk for both teams right there. Put the eight hole on after having him down 0-2 in the count. And that may be enough for Connor McBride. These two teams will go at seven o'clock on Saturday night. And this is an opportunity for, for the Aggies to really set the table. And we talked about small ball and offensive style earlier. Texas A&M, not one to really bunt here. I can, I can assure you, if this were Auburn, they would be laying a bunt down with the nine hole up and, and runners on, two on with no outs. But Texas A&M doesn't do that, so they're going to swing it. Quickly 0-2 for Sorrell. Just missed up with the fastball. Yeah, pitching backwards right away. Slider, slider, heater. Slow the bat down, show some spin, and then speed it up. Now it's a chess match between hitter and pitcher right here. How do you stay alive if you're Sorrell? You don't. You don't. And he waves at strike three there and a nasty breaker. How about that? Carlson coming out of the pen, inheriting two runs, and making quick work of the freshman. Watch this just drop off the table and run out of bat for Sorrell. Lefties sometimes like that ball down and in, but not quite that much. Top of the order in Gavin Grohovac. Grohovac a first inning single and a second inning fly out. Grohovac shot the ball the other way on that single, split the uh, four hole in between first and second. He needs to have that approach right here. He needs to be thinking the other way and then react to that breaking ball when he sees it. But he's got to see the ball a little deeper. If he gets out in front, he'll be fooled by that slider. Just like that. Just like that, 2-0. There comes the slider. 
So Carlson a pitch away here. A ground ball could get Auburn out of here, but a single or a double here could also bust this game open. Big moment. Krahovac into the gap, right center field. Not a great jump at second base from Targach. It's not going to matter. He's around to score easily. Grahovac's two for three. He drives in Targach and Camarillo went to third base. Watch him stay on the breaker. The same pitch he just waved through. He stays on it just enough. Catches it off the end. Shoots it the other way just like he did in his first at bat for that hit. And it's in the air long enough where Targash has to freeze for a second. He ends up scoring. But with one out, you got to honor that in case it gets caught. And now's when opportunity strikes for the Aggies with Laviolette and Montgomery coming and ducks on the pond. Laviolette ripped a double the opposite way off the wall and left center when he came up an inning ago. So he's one for two. He's at least thinking something in the air to the outfield here. With Camarillo at third base, that's even better. Base hit to center field. Drives home Camarillo. Auburn tied the game with three an inning ago, and then the Aggies answer back with three of their own in the bottom of the fourth. Good pitch here, gets in on the hands, but that's what a good hitter and a flat swing will do for you. Almost like a, I don't want to call that a Texas leaguer, but it wasn't hit on the barrel, but a flat swing working up the middle of the field typically will yield, yield you good results. And it does there for the big power hitter as he turns into a, a contact hitter there and does his job. So Braden Montgomery, he launched the first inning home run, two-run shot into section 12, 13 homers on the year. And the 42 RBIs, second in the nation, and tops in the SEC. Opportunity knocks for him right here. Where do you pitch him? He's such a tough hitter to go after. Not only is he the switch hitter, so you're always pitching to him when he's got the advantage, but he hits home runs to all parts of the yard. And when he swings, it's just barrel after barrel. So I try and keep this thing down and see if you can get yourself a ground ball. It's gone the opposite way, heading over toward the line. Mason Mainers thought he may have lost it for a second, but he reaches back and makes the grab. Two outs. Yeah, we're nearing that time with that sky color where it's going to get a little more kind of white ish in between that blue and white color so no he, he didn't he didn't lose it but he he didn't track it tremendously and Montgomery missed that ball and it still got to the track so the ball is flying and I don't think that's any secret tonight with this north wind so all six runs by the Aggies charged to McBride the Auburn starter went three innings and all six of the runs he allows are earned. So a rough outing for him against a very good Texas A&M lineup. So Jackson Appel looks at a pitch away and low. So 2-0. and Appel drove in a run his last time up. He's flown out to center twice the last time. It was deep enough to bring home Jace Laviolette from third base. Well, there's that three-man gauntlet that we talk about, and right now you, you get done with Montgomery, you think you can take a breath, but you really can't. Oh, you swing it. Oh, it was 2-1. I thought it was 3-0 count there. I was messed up. I was like, man, he pulled the trigger on a 3-0 slider. 
gets back to two and two. Hard cut too. He got a breaking ball. Yeah. He went after it. That is right at Javon Hernandez, and he'll flip to Cooper Weiss to end the inning. But the thing. So four series start tonight. Three series begin tomorrow, and those three will have to finish on Easter Sunday. The series starting tomorrow are Mississippi State at Florida, Georgia at Tennessee, and Kentucky at Ole Miss. How about Kentucky? They're off to a 5-1 and one start in the SEC. Caden Green, a single, his first time up. He's out in front of that. It's one and two. So for these two teams, the Tigers, they were swept by Vanderbilt to start conference play. They lost two of three to Arkansas last weekend, but very close games, all three of them. Grahovac throws out Caden Green. And then for Texas A&M, the Aggies, they have actually won every non-conference game. And then in the league, to start it off, they went to Florida and went one and two, and then back home here last weekend, took two of three from Mississippi State. Javon Hernandez 0 for 1. He grounded out to third base earlier. Gavin Grohovac has been quite busy. He has. Over there at the hot corner tonight. They put plenty in play right to him. Put this one in play right over him. That goes all the way to the wall. Looks like a double coming for Javon Hernandez. One out. Rips a two-base hit. Yeah, we've seen this. Yeah, you said it, Will, a lot tonight. We've seen it. Another double down the line. We've seen a line drive that way, and that may be it for, for Ryan Prager from the bat of Hernandez as he gets a, a double, and, and Auburn trying to strike back here. Aggie's going to go to a new arm. Tried a breaking ball. It stayed up and in. Hard cut, but at 99 miles per hour, it's under the bat. Yeah, that's it. Under the bat, too. You usually say under the bat about breaking pitches, but he's got so much movement on that heater, it is dropping under bats. Here it is again. He's and gonna it's going to get across the foul line before Burton runs it down. So Cooper Weiss who has walked and flown out tonight against Prager. He is the first man to see Cortez, and it's a one and two count. Tried a breaking ball again, and it just missed out. Tried another one, and this one, he got him looking. Big strikeout, and there's now two down. Well, Weiss didn't like it, but that's just paint. That's a strike, too. He may have caught it below the zone, or what felt like below the zone, but that's crossing high enough to be a strike. It's just almost impossible. It's a pitching strategy, hard in, soft away. And to a right-hander, that's what Chris Cortez does. Man, that's just the easiest 98, 99 you're going to see in college. Ike Irish extended his hit streak to 12 games in a row his last time up. 
Irish ranks fifth in the SEC coming in tonight in RBIs, 34 of them. He's got a man out there on second base and Javon Hernandez as he bats with two down in the fifth. That's an ugly cut. That's that's just being fooled. Then he went around. Yeah, that that's that's what it looks like when you sit fastball, you commit, and then you realize that there's some spin, and you're just, you know, two zero count. You just kind of wave and take your medicine there. Just a little too much movement on that for Cortez, and it's starting over the strike zone, but it's running away. That's a great take by Irish. You can see that just move off the edge with the run that his two seam is, is generating. Runner going, throw down, got him. Auburn trying to create something. Instead, they make the third out at third base. Yeah, yeah. I, I it's like a calzone with pretzel bread. Costanza with the calzones, yeah. <laughs> well, I looked at that in the concessions before the game, and the lady kept telling me what it was, and I'd never heard of pizza. So I asked her four times in the fifth. I said, I'll just have the hot dog. <laughs> Costanza had to get the calzones. Did he ever bring Steinbrenner a pizza? <laughs> no, but. <laughs> That's who he had to get them for, the boss. It, well, yeah. George Steinbrenner. Would have thrown a wrench in the schedule, though. A&M with a big answer their last time up. Ted Burton with a screamer Ooh. there at third base, but a fantastic play by Caden Green will rob him of a base hit. Yeah, more action at third base. Green stabs that one, pops up. Easy throw to get Burton. Made that play look way easier than it was. So Auburn hit the Aggies with three in the top of the fourth to tie the game. But this man, Hayden Schott, got a big bottom of the fourth going with a solo home run to right. A&M would put up three runs an inning ago. So now the Aggies are back up three. Schott showed bunt, pulled back, and the pitch went all the way to the backstop. That's a check swing, but it might work out for Hayden Shot. <laughs> Loop that right over Caden Green. He has two hits tonight. I've said Hayden, Hayden Shot has barreled up some balls that has not fallen for base hits this year. Maybe it's starting to come back to him a little bit. The, yep. the luck is starting to turn. It's exactly it. I mean, look at that swing. You know he's been going to church when that thing falls because that is a, I don't want to hit this ball at all, but I've already committed, please fall, and it does. And it does, and you think, you know, so, so, someone like, uh, who was it earlier, Chris Stanfield, who lasers one to second base, it gets caught, he's thinking out there, like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you know, I put the best swing in the world on a ball, I get out, and shot does that, gets himself a hit, but that's, that's just how baseball is. It'll come back around, and like you said, shots lined out his fair share this year. Shot even had a chopped infield single on Tuesday. So that's two games in a row. He kind of gets an excuse me hit. So, yeah, perhaps that luck is starting to turn. Ryan Targotch at the plate. He walked his last time up. Scored a run in that big last frame. But Hayden Schott transferred here from Columbia. He is one of the funnest conversations you will have in college baseball. I promise you that. I feel like it's got to be 
stressful to wear two. He wears two hats, you know? He's like, he's the most fun, happy-go-lucky, confident, talkative guy in the world, yet when the when the lights come on, he's got to He's got to be a gritty baseball player and go produce for one of the best teams in the country. Because that's the thing. I mean, yeah, he's not just a personality and a so-called team leader. A lot is expected of him at the plate as well when he does put on the jersey. Swing and a miss here by Targach. No, you're exactly right. And you keep, you know, I keep thinking to myself, well, he, he has almost developed this persona. It's very attractive to to hang out and be around, but what happens if his play suffers? Well, it really hasn't. Uh, he's continued to produce, but a guy like that, you you, you think he'd, he'd take it in stride and he'd do great and stay that team leader because that's what he's become. But Shot, he's got some self-awareness. I talked to him after Tuesday, the game against Houston Christian, and he admitted that, you know, in recent weeks, I haven't gone at it that well. But maybe that's part of it. You, you can't get him down. You know, he, he just appreciates the game. He appreciates being here in College Bay, in College Station to play with the Aggies for one more year in the collegiate game. And, you know, you just can't get him too far down with the way he operates and his personality. Camarillo lifts this to right field, and coming in is Bobby Pierce. That will end the inning. Well, and Jace Laviolette. Hike Irish, first pitch swinging. Give me close. Tough play. Ball got away. Hike Irish safe at first base. Ryan Targotch tried to get him on the run. Man, bang, bang play. You either got to flip it quick or you got to throw it real hard. And if you throw it real hard and you're that close, it's tough to handle. Watch Targosh. He lets it rip. Handcuffs Burton. But, hey, what a good time to talk about that double bag, huh? You know, it looks like a little collision there. The Aggies tried a, a double bag on Tuesday. That may have allowed for a little cleaner non-trip action going on there. Twice this year, oh. A&M has used the double bag at first base to avoid situations just like this. They did it in non-conference games against Texas Southern as well as Prairie View. But it's a bag that is painted green, and it's on the outside of the foul line. The runner has to go for that bag on a play like you just saw, and the first baseman has to occupy the white bag that is in fair territory. Jim Schlossnagel is a proponent of it. He likes it. That's why he's used it twice this year, not using it for conference games, though. For Ike Irish, it's a second infield single tonight. He's two for three, both base hits on the infield. Well, I thought they may have gotten tangled up as, you know, both getting too close to the back, but it looked like Irish reached with that foot which you're taught not to and he didn't get to the bag with the long stride and therefore had to try and clip it causing him to trip so he almost tripped over himself for the bag Cortez quickly 3-0 this is where you got to watch out he's nasty all right but Cortez can kind of go on these runs where he'll throw five six seven balls in a row and put some runners on He goes four straight there. And I think what, what, what's such a challenge here for a pitcher is you just did your job against one of the more dangerous hitters in the conference. You got a chopped ground ball that was barely hit. And he got a hit out of it. So that's frustrating. And, and you feel like you should have an out instead you have a runner on no outs. And you got to be able to flush it. And it's hard. But you can't let that snowball, especially in the middle of the, the order here with McMurray and all of his RBI potential come into the plate. Now, Auburn, they trailed 3 nothing with one swing of the bat from Mason Mainers. Got a three-run homer earlier to tie it at three. Now Auburn trails by three again. They have two aboard, and they have their home run leader up. And Chris Cortez having trouble finding the strike zone. Not missing by much, but not in the zone.
That's a nice pitch down 2-0, and that clocked in at 100 miles per hour. Get a look. Look at the run on that. You see the two-seam action, but 100. I mean, it's it's moving. There it is again. Okay, with another one in triple digits. Yeah, it's just it's so fast, especially when it's not flat. With run and sink like that two-seam has. You really just need to throw that. Now he went away. <laughs> McMurray able to catch up to that one to foul it off. So if you can locate the slider via bats over, it, it, it's all but over. You locate the slider here, there's just no way McMurray's going to be able to stay in on it. But I don't even think you go to it. You just stick with the fastball. Oh, he fouled went. that away, and he did go with a breaker. He went with something. I don't know if that was slider or changeup. I it think stayed up. It sure did. It was 88 miles an hour. I think that may have been a trying to work a changeup in there, which Cor Chris Cortez does not throw very often. That missed low and in, so a full count pitch coming with two on and nobody out. Ripped him right back up the middle. Auburn has bases loaded with nobody out. Man, that's being on time for the heater. You know 100's coming. 3-2. Quick swing there by the big man. Short swing. Right back up the middle. That's going to yield you a lot of hits, and that may be all for Cortez as we keep see Coach Jim Schlossdangel coming out. Well, if you're going to the pen and you need big outs and somebody to get you some distance, usually that's Evan Oschenbeck. But it will not be Oschenbeck this time. But expect some breaking stuff here. Chris Stanfield, the hitter, he's ripped the ball twice. A line out to second base and then a double down the left field line. Back to back breakers. Coming in, throwing the sweeper. There it is again. If you're going to throw it 2-0, you're probably going to throw it 2-1. Didn't, went for the outside heater. Full count pitch now coming to Stanfield. Fought that off on a breaking ball. Stick with a full count. Now Stewart against Stanfield. Another 3-2 pitch. Fisted him. Almost caught that behind his back, and he had it out at home, and he threw it away. Almost made a miraculous play, but then when he had the easy play at home, he threw it away. Holy cow. Sports Center top 10 coming, and then... Wow, almost grabs it and then just rushes to throw. I don't even know if he rushed it. He knew he had time. Just pulls it down and. Man, that, that whole inning, this whole. And Evan Oshenbach's been given the ball. They shift him to the right side. He showed bunt on the first pitch. And it went foul straight back. So he hit an opposite field home run already, but they shift him to pull to the right side.
Shows bunt again, but that's a call strike. Wow, with the bases loaded, that's like a safety squeeze, too. It's not a suicide squeeze where the runner at third's taken off regardless. He's not going to get that great of a break, so a force is in play at home. Quite surprised at that. So with the shift on, there's essentially no shortstop. Ali Camarillo is playing to the right side of second base. Breaking ball, he was out front. Nevin Oshenbeck struck him out. Goes with the slider, gets it under the bat. What a big out for actually the changeup, the left on left changeup, just dropping. The bottom falling out from under it. So he gets under the bat of Maynard. And that's one of the three big outs he's got to go get. Now he's got to face Carter Wright, who's 0 for 2. Man, Wright, what are you doing there? You just got to put a swing on it. You're trying to elevate this thing. and Obviously, you want to hit, but you got a sack fly opportunity right in front of you. Cut into this two-run lead. Hit that at Targots. The Aggies going to try to turn two, but they threw it away again. And another run will score. Defensive problems for the Aggies have helped Auburn get a couple of runs in this frame. For the second time this inning, they throw a ball away when they should have gotten an out. Let's see what happens. No excuse there. Camarillo probably just doesn't get a grip based off how that comes out of his hand. See if you can get a look here. Yeah, it, there's just no grip there. And the saying is no grip, no throw. And uh, if he doesn't throw that ball, it's a one-run game. He throws it away, and now it's a tie ball game. Oshenbeck, man, he did exactly what he needed to do. You get the strikeout, and you get a weak ground ball for a double play. Think about those two errors, Will. Think about that. You have a, almost a circus top ten play on a catch by... Josh Stewart throws that ball away at home, which could have been a double play. And then right there, you have an inning-inning double play to keep the lead at two. And you throw that away. And now the go-ahead run for Auburn is at second base. So a walk and two errors, Aggie mistakes have helped Auburn along in this frame, and we've got a tie ball game again. A&M was up three to nothing. Auburn fired back to tie it at three. A&M got up six to three. Auburn doesn't go anywhere. They've got it back to six to six. High and tight to Caden Green. Hit this at Camarillo, and he's going to have a long throw, and he made it. But Auburn gets three. Clawed back. Had a big swing in the fourth inning to tie the game and just put another three spot up to tie the game. A couple Aggie errors contributing to that, but yeah, we're all knotted at six here in the bottom of the sixth. Caden Sorrell leading off, doubled in the second, struck out swinging in the fourth. So 3-0, and oh, Parker Carlson on for the Tigers. He stepped into the game in the fourth inning in relief for the starter, Connor McBride. McBride went three-plus innings, and it's McBride who is charged with all six of the runs, all earned. And now another mound meeting for the Auburn Tigers led by their pitch. <laughs> now
That's a groan from a student section and a crowd that really is itching to do a ball five chant. Yeah. I don't know if they wanted Sorrell to be on as badly as they just wanted to chant. <laughs> Chopped away, foul, and a full count. Sorrell is four for ten in the last three games, starting all of them in left field. On the full count pitch, he walks. Fourth time tonight, A&M has gotten the leadoff man on. They have scored him all of the other three times. Up and out with a breaking ball, just shy of 80 miles per hour on the first pitch. Grohovac lost a nine game hitting streak on Tuesday, starting up a new one, going two for three thus far tonight. And he skied this shallow center field. Coming on is Chris Stanfield. Now Jace Laviolette. Laviolette's two for three. A&M has five hits from the top three in the order tonight. Two hits Grohovac, two hits Laviolette. One hit by Montgomery. Montgomery's hit is a two-run homer. Nice pick by Ike Irish. Yeah, that was, man. That was headed for the backstop. Spike in a fastball is kind of a catcher's worst nightmare, not just a, a fastball in the dirt, but really spiked, you know, 55, 56 feet. And he just picked that one, keeping a runner at a scoring position. Came back in with a fastball for a strike. Check swing. He didn't go around, so it's two and one. They appealed at third base umpire Hank Heminen. He confirmed that Laviolette held up. Now that's outside. Three walks tonight by the Aggies. They came into this game second nationally in base on balls. They don't usually swing at bad pitches. 3-1 pitch here. Laviolette waved through it. Full count. Take the ball, swing at the strikes. That's the mantra. Should be the mantra of every hitter. It's just hard to do. Aggies do it well. Big pitch coming here. Almost a protective swing there. It's like Laviolette just goes into two strike mode. Like Tommy Tanks at LSU. It's like you have your hitting mode where you're ready to do damage and then you have your I'm here to fight and battle mode. Don't want to strike out. But I also, if you're Laviolette, you know that Bauman doesn't want to put you on and face Montgomery. I expect him to come, come right to Laviolette here over the plate. Got to be timed up. I would say for that outside fastball and adjust for anything else. Missed low and away. That's two walks this inning. One by Carlson. One by Bauman. Those are the base on balls. So two Aggies aboard, one out, and Braden Montgomery coming to the plate. After the two-run homer in the first, Montgomery grounded out and flew out to left field. 
The ground out at first base. And then the F7. Switch hitter goes from the right side here facing the lefty Bauman. Mm. Looked out in front, swinging a miss. Yep. You know, that's not always the worst thing. You saw Montgomery miss that first ball by a mile. He's looking for a fastball, gets the slider, just swings through it and takes a strike. I always had a problem not being able to swing through anything on purpose. I would try and hit everything, therefore resulting in some soft ground balls instead of just like a strike. Oh, he, Montgomery. Montgomery saying it hit him on the foot, and it did. Three free passes issued by Auburn pitching this inning. Bases are loaded with one out. I don't know if you could hear it or see it, but at top of the foot, or the toe maybe. Well, he pointed at the back foot briefly in home plate umpire. Confirmed. Confirmed. So bases are loaded with one out. The outfield, just see it up, put a swing on it. You're trying to keep everything down if you're bombing. You're looking for off-speed, change-up, actually anything, bottom of the strike zone. And Appel's job is to take those pitches or really be sure he can get under it and drive it out there. A hit is just bonus. That's the take right there. Appel also a switch hitter, so he goes over to the right side to face Bauman. He did deliver earlier in the third inning with a sacrifice fly that drove home Jace Laviolette from third base. So two and one now with that fastball on the outside corner. Man, just look how it's so calm. H Appel's approach. Looks like his heart beats at 50 beats a minute. Inside that hit him. Two walks, two hit batsmen, mistakes by Auburn pitching, and that will give AM the lead as Caden Sorrell comes home. AM made the mistakes in the top of the sixth, Auburn making the mistakes in the bottom half of the sixth. Bauman just yanked the slider across his body. It's a big miss, and when you got bases loaded, that's what you can't do. Walker hit by pitch, free runs, and Appel was already working the count, but Bauman made it easy putting him on. Ted Burton, that is in foul territory. It will be out of play. It will make the East Lawn here at Bluebell Park. So Jackson Appel, who was just hit by a pitch, has doesn't have a hit tonight, but he has two RBIs. Burton struck out, flown out, and ground out tonight. A strikeout opened his night in the first. Since then, a fly to center and a ground out to third. But he's thinking in the air to the outfield as well. Outside, one and one. So Bauman faces Burton with Laviolette, Montgomery, and Appel on. One out. Check swing. He held up. Two balls and a strike. That appeal was down at first base. And the umpire there, Stephen Hagen. Teddy Burton. Two balls and a strike. So that stayed low and in. And now three and one.
The Aggies don't have a hit in the inning. This is all free passes being issued by Auburn pitching. Three walks in the inning. Breaking ball, floats it in there, starts him off with a strike. Rip that to right field, and it looks deep enough to bring home Braden Montgomery. Play at the plate a lot closer than you may have thought, but Montgomery slides in there safely. Nice throw by Bobby Pierce. Well, Pierce got behind that ball so well. Shot, tags it, look at him moving forward. That's all it was. Caught it a little bit over his head, but that momentum allowed him to get all that on a throw, and holy cow, a back foot tag there. Could have actually got Montgomery. Wow, that was bang, bang. Targot, you see he wears the number 12. You could almost give him two nicknames. He was once the Hallettsville Hammer. A nod to the small hometown that he's from. Great baseball playing town, Hallettsville, Texas. But now he goes by the 12th man. Given the distinction of wearing the hallowed number 12 for this baseball team. So the Hallettsville Hammer's on hold for a little while. Well, he wears that number yeah, 12. Yeah, it's tough to have a nickname <laughs> that trumps the 12th man yeah. when you're at AM. Rip that. It's going to go foul onto the East Lawn. Targash has yet to get it going like he did in 2022. Last year was solid, just not as good. But when he connects on a ball, I just I think it may have been, it may be lost of the sheer power that he possesses. It is. It is, he's one of the strongest hitters in America, generating the most power when he lands on a ball. It is so fun to watch, which is why he's the Hallettsville Hammer. Runner goes, no play made at him. Ted Burton gets to second base. So two in scoring position for Targotch. Two, two count. Got him looking on the outside corner. The bottom half of six without a hit. Auburn issued three walks and hit two batters in that inning, helping the Aggies along. So leading off as we go to the late innings in the seventh for the Tigers is Javon Hernandez looking out at Evan Oshenbeck. Hernandez doubled his last time. Ripped one off the left field wall. Oshenbeck goes off speed to get him off balance and off and out in front. Upstairs there. Missed outside, full count now. Coach Rob Childress used to always put extra emphasis on an inning like this, on a half inning like this. When, when your offense goes and takes the lead or puts a big inning on the scoreboard. Shallow right center, got a call for it. It's Braden Montgomery who will take care of it, one out. A&M has a new second baseman into the game. There's Caden Kent. For Kent, this will be the 25th game he's played in. He's played in almost all of them. It's the 12th time he's come in as a substitute off the bench.
You know, as I was saying, you, you put in emphasis on a half inning like this. When your offense goes and takes the lead, puts a, puts a crooked number on the scoreboard, the, the way you can give yourself the best momentum is to go go put a goose egg up on the on the scoreboard and and not let the other team score because immediately you retain momentum instead of giving it right back in the last feels like three innings there has been an exchange of three runs tigers three runs aggies three runs tigers three runs aggies so there's an opportunity for texas a&m to to kind of keep everything on their side right here if you keep auburn from striking back <laughs> it's just, it has. It's just been, been a set of threes tonight. Yeah, yeah, it has. The last three innings, and then, you know, the Aggies, even in the bottom of the third, the Aggies took the lead three to zero. Did he go around? He is indeed rung up. Evan Oshenbeck strikes out Cooper Weiss. Goes with the high heat, gets the check swing. You can see right there, clearly went all the way around. Better view right here. Actually, came pretty close to checking that. I think that went right to parallel, but that was a good call. Yeah, you can look at the start of the bottom of the third inning. The Aggies took the lead three to nothing. Immediately, Auburn tied it three to three. And then the Aggies answered right back. And then the same thing happened last inning. So there's big innings answered by big innings. So one team is going to need to do it and then shut them down on defense. And whoever does that is going to go win this thing. Ike Irish, two infield singles in this one. Showed you the SEC scoreboard to start this inning and MLB opening day score to give you from the Lone Star State. Chicago Cubs, Texas Rangers, 2-2 in the seventh. Rangers, the defending World Series champs. One two pitch. That missed low and away. It's a good block there by Appel. Not only getting over to block it, but squaring those shoulders up to keep the ball close. It's the biggest thing about being a catcher. Anyone can, you know, let the ball hit you and block it, but can you keep it close? I thought that was going to get his back elbow. He checked well, it was his... close to the strike zone by the by the time it broke yeah. into the mid of Jackson Appel. You're right. We could see it here. It's a full count. That looks like it'll get out of play. Third base side. Grahovac giving it a look. It will indeed make the stands. So full count to Ike Irish. Well, he's a tough out. He's not going to go down easily. One of the best hitters in the SEC against one of the best relievers in the SEC, if not the best. Ike Irish against Evan Oshenbeck. That's worth the price of admission. And Irish wins. And he wins in a big way. <laughs> He almost missed first base. He was so excited. Solo shot. Irish is three for four tonight. Couple of infield singles. Nothing infield about that. He launches his ninth home run of the year over section 12 and right. Yeah, he drove that ball. That ball was, I mean, just like Montgomery, just driven. I think Oshenbeck knew it, too, that that ball was gone. Yeah, that's a no-doubter, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him. Yeah, he's fired up. Yeah, he was screaming in the dugout before he got to first and looked down, and he almost ran past first base. Trying to get that Tiger dugout fired up. Lead cut to two now. That may stay in with this wind. Burton's giving it a look. He overran it but reached back to make the grab. It's a foul out by Bobby Pierce. And here is your offensive comparison this evening. Ollie Camarillo leads off of the Aggies. 
both teams can hit, there's no doubt. But some A&M errors have helped Auburn, and some Auburn walks have helped A&M. And these are two offenses that don't really need a lot of assistance. Ali Camarillo leading off. He's one for two, single, walk, fly out. Score to run. Back in the fourth inning. Two and one now as Dylan Watts, the right-hander, is the fourth Auburn pitcher of the night. Camarillo hit this well to right center. On the run, making the grab is Bobby Pierce. Nice swing, nice catch as well. Man, Pierce was cooking out there off the bat. I was sure that was splitting the gap. We had a good view of, of just the angle of the ball being right behind it. And I thought with that win, that was going to push it to the track or to the wall. Bobby Pierce cruising. Makes a big grab to get the leadoff runner out and keep Camarillo off second. Caden Sorrell going to try to turn the lineup over. Top of the order in Gavin Grohovac up next. Had him played right there. And that's exactly where Cooper Weiss was. You had a chop ball like that back up the middle, and you think it's got a good chance of going into center field, but Cooper Weiss didn't even move. Scouting report is perfect on that play. <laughs> so this is how you want to face the top of the order. Two out, nobody on. Exactly. And the top of the A&M order, these first three in the lineup, it might be the best opening three of a lineup in the country, if not the best, one of the best. And they have been productive tonight. And Grohovac lays into a pitch deep to left center. That'll one-hop the wall. It's his third hit of the night. He is three for five. Man, he must have caught this a little off the end because that timing and launch angle, I thought that ball was going into orbit with how strong and powerful he is. Still easily splitting the gap for a double. Two out double, so. He's clapping. He may have thought he got it out of here for just a second. Yeah, maybe he saw it disappear and thought it was gone and then had to turn on the burners. So Grohovac has three hits at the top of the order. Laviolette, who bats right now, has two hits. And then after Laviolette, Montgomery has a two-run homer in this one. Damaged by the top three in the order. Good pitch. Ah, yeah, that is a nice breaking ball. Yep, it was 1-0 right there. He goes back to the breaker, trying to steal a strike. He got a base open here. And you got danger lurking on deck, so doesn't get a whole lot better if you put Laviolette on, but you can do that right there and maybe be a little more picky with what you throw and where you throw it in hopes of getting a weak swing or a weak out. A little insurance would be nice here for the maroon and white. Odd move by Watts. Looked like there was a hitch in there on the turnaround and throw. Yeah, it was almost just like a subtle inside move that looked a little uncoordinated, but maybe that was by disguise. Struck out Jay Slavia. Four series this weekend in the SEC moved up to a Thursday start to avoid Easter Sunday. Fly out to Jay Slavia on one pitch to start this inning. 
And then there are three SEC series that will conclude on Easter Sunday. Those three series are Mississippi State, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and Kentucky Ole Miss. And that's what Evan Oshenbeck wanted to dial up. Quick out of a big hitter. McMurray flies to center. Here's Chris Stanfield. Stanfield swung it pretty well tonight. He's one for three, but one of his outs pretty loud when a hard line drive at second base that was caught. Really enjoyed watching Stanfield tonight at the plate. Just utilized the whole field. Like his approach, it's a quick, short swing, but it's powerful and it's it's barreled a ball. It's flat. It's it's a successful swing in my eyes. Fouled that off his foot, and that is not where the protective guard is. The protective shin guard is on the left leg. He fouled it off his right leg, and that has to hurt. Yeah, where did that? Where did that get him? No, oh. it did get off. It got above the uh, guard yeah, on the calf. left leg. Yeah, oh, right off. Yeah, it got the left leg. It just got above the guard. <laughs> oh, almost again. <laughs> He's fighting, though. And that, that short swing... That'll allow you to be able to fight deep into counts. Look at him choke up there. Maybe widen out a little bit. See where Oshenbeck wants to attack him here. Went up and just missed the zone. Reached out, got that into left field, base hit with one out, Stanfield. Four times he's come up, and on three of those, he's put a good swing on the ball, and he has two hits. Man, watch him stay on this changeup. Look at him go down and get it. Yeah, that's just finding the barrel, man. That's not a big-time swing. That's not a powerful swing. But that's utilizing your body control, your hand-eye, your back control, and just putting the barrel to the ball and letting the rest take care of itself. Great at bat. Shift is on to the right side for Mason Mainers. He had a home run that tied the game earlier. He'd love to do the same here. Another game-tying homer. But three infielders to the right side of second base, and shortstop is vacated. Grohovac, the third baseman, shades over that way. And he's looped this one high in the air to center field, and Laviolette will make the easy catch. Two outs. So two down, one on. Carter Wright, the DH, will come to the plate. For Carter Wright, this is just his sixth start of the season. Prior to tonight, he only played in eight games. But he's gotten the nod as the DH. He's 0 for 3 in this one. And Oshenbeck with a breaking ball at 79 starts him off. Arkansas has just broken the game open with LSU. Just got a three-run homer from Kendall Diggs. And Arkansas is up 7-3, to three, and they may get to 6-1 and one in SEC play. LSU may fall back to 2-5. and five. That game is in the bottom of the eighth. LSU has just one more chance. Fouled. Looks like it'll get out of play onto the lawn, and it will. Stonk someone. You see that deflection? I thought it did. Yeah. I think it hit him. The ball is coming straight down, and then it shoots straight left. Hit something hard. It means it didn't hit the grass. No. <laughs> 
two and two now to the Auburn DH Carter Wright. Nice breaking pitch, and he buckled Carter right. He struck. Braden Montgomery is one of those. He was hit by a pitch in the sixth. He scored in that frame. He also launched a two-run homer over the right field wall all the way back in the first inning. Thirteenth home run. He now leads this A&M team. Forty-two runs driven in. That leads the SEC. Transfer from Stanford has played big for the Aggies. We were talking about draft picks earlier. Jace Lavulette of AM, Ike Irish of Auburn. This is first round stuff right here in Braden Montgomery. Oh, there's no doubt. He's as polished of a hitter as I've seen in a while and does it from both sides of the plate. Hit that right back at Watts. That's a nice job fielding by Dylan Watts. Had to act quickly. MLB draft this year is up in Fort Worth. Stock stockyards? Yeah, I think somewhere around the stockyards, uh, one of the coliseums there. Braden Montgomery was on MLB Network a few weeks ago, and he was with Harold Reynolds. Matt Vaskersian interviewing him, and they were begging him to get to Fort Worth for the draft so he could be there. Oh, yeah? So, I mean, perhaps he could. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Do it at Billy Bob's, have a concert right after. <laughs> hey. I'd get me there. Who would you like to see in that concert? Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking of a lot of people. And hey, maybe I can just do some, maybe some Pat Green and... Robert Earl would be good. Man, that's perfect for me. Yeah, that, that's a little, that's a little dated for the kids nowadays. But that's all I need. Maybe some Roger Krieger <laughs> for the kids now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean you are just stacking my perfect lineup together. <laughs> Throw in some Corey Morrow. Yeah, Corey Morrow one time played at one of Jim Schlossnagel's uh, RBI Foundation charity events in Fort Worth when I was a when I was a player at TCU. My dad made me go to support him and went there as an 18-year-old college kid. Then Corey <laughs> Morrow steps up. I'm, and I'm going like, back to your dad made you. <laughs> they go to this thing. I was You're like, well. You're not much for the, for the, for the banquet circuit. <laughs> <laughs> no. 18, 19 years old. Yeah, that's not a lot. That's not banquet life when no. you're that age. That's a ground out by Jackson Appel. But when Corey Morrow stands on the stage, I'll well, start donating. <laughs> I mean, you know where this has to lead me to. Did you hear about June 15th at Kyle Field? Yeah, I tried to get on the wait list today, and I, it was 18 minutes too late. But, yeah, I guess I'll buy in the secondary market because I'll be there. George Strait, the king at Kyle, June 15th. There'll be over 100,000 there. There's going to be a lot of people joining you. We could sit here, actually, and just open the windows and listen. Hear the music. Yeah. You bring the cooler. We could do that. Um, I'll load it up with some Mountain Dew. <laughs> what are you channeling your inner Sean White? <laughs> we'll get hyped up on caffeine and sugar and <laughs> country music. Maybe they'll open the concession stand here at Bluebell. We'll get yeah. a soft pretzel. Man, that sounds like a great <laughs> evening. Save some money on tickets. Listen to Amarillo by morning just softly rolling into this booth from across the street. <laughs> Our producer is asking us to sing. Uh, not happening. That's going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa requests us to sing. That's all you. I did not get blessed with a singing voice. And that was paint on the bottom, bottom corner. Jaden Green, or excuse me, Caden Green leads it off. He's one for three tonight, singled back in the third. And a couple of ground outs since then.
So fouled away in a 2 2 count. And a swing and a miss. Evan Oshenbeck has a strikeout. That's seven K's by AM pitching tonight. One down in the top of the ninth. Oshenbeck just doing what he does. And that's getting outs and making it look easy. He's been cruising since he came in in the sixth. Got to go get Hernandez and Weiss. Get through the top of that lineup, but trying to secure this win in the in the top of the ninth for the Aggies, get, get themselves a, a Friday night dub, and I think that that man right there on the mound is is uh, the security de blank <laughs> security blanket, and I said Friday, and it's Thursday, but feels like a Friday. Kinda is. Yeah, with Easter <laughs> holiday. It's game one. I'm just gonna call it Friday tomorrow Saturday. But uh, yeah, yeah, Oshenbeck is, is the guy. He's the man. He comes in in big situations and gets it done for you, and he has the last year. And he's doing it in 2024, so he's trying to polish this one off. Went high to Javon Hernandez in a 1 2 count. Now he tried a breaking ball that was low in the dirt. Rip to right, Montgomery heading over there, had him played pretty well. Good swing by Javon Hernandez, but there's two down in the top of the ninth. Oshenbeck and A&M need one more. Top of the order in Cooper Weiss. That's Hard cut, fouled away, straight back. If Weiss can work his way aboard, Ike Irish is next, and Irish in the seventh inning blasted a home run way over the right field wall off Oshenbeck. He awaits. Does he get to the plate? Now one and two to Weiss. Back doors a slider there. He's still got the change up. That's the thing about Oshenbeck. He can throw anything right here. Could, could climb the ladder with a heater. Bluebell making some noise here, trying to end this thing. Up high with heat, swing and a miss. Ashenbeck strikes out five. AM as a